Welcome to A Shot of Rock. I'm your host, Alex, and I'm here with Jackson from Head PE. How are you? Very well. How about you? <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, so you guys have a new CD that came out on the 22nd of July called Evolution. That's correct. What kind of feedback have you gotten from fans? It's been very good. Uh, we've been able to play some of the new stuff live and slam it. Um, kids really seem to be responding very well. And uh, they seem to be responding well to the album, so uh, all is well. Uh, do you know how many how much you've sold so far or do you not pay attention to that? I don't you know what I've heard some numbers thrown around but I don't know exactly what it is I want to say it was over 3,000 the first week second week I haven't really heard exactly what it is but it was nice though because we were able to make it up on the app nice. like 105 like I think that. I saw that on Facebook that you posted yeah that was pretty cool I mean just just being on that thing was awesome obviously yeah. it doesn't mean now what it used to mean in the past I yeah Relatively speaking, it is nice to be to be on that. Yeah. Thing. I've always known of the, the Billboard 200. It was always one of those things you'd look at and just kind of never. I never dreamed I would ever even be a part of any album that would be on there. So that's really yeah. Nice. Really that cool. that is pretty amazing. Um, what kind of sound were you going for with this album? Since it's evolution, it really does seem to evolve from the beginning, which kind of has a Black Sabbath feel to it, to mm -hmm. the kind of the end of the album where it's like this is kind of more reggae-ish. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> We've kind of developed this sort of section idea uh, actually um, in terms of the set as well as the record where we have a sort of like a heavy metal kind of thrash hip-hop set and then towards the end we have what we call the champagne room mm -hmm. and then uh, that's the <laughs> section of the set where we go in and we play some of the Irish stuff, the reggae, the hip-hop and and uh, all that so that's that's um it's really fun so that theory kind of went into the uh, the album too but uh, we really wanted to do something a little bit different than we had than we had done in the past. You know, we've done the hardcore stuff, we've done a lot of that, but we were just at the time really into some of the classics, you know, Black Sabbath, Led Zeppelin. We wanted to do it, we wanted to do a lot of that in its pure form, but also have it, you know, with the head PE kind mm -hmm. of stamp on it as well. So I feel like we've done that for sure, and we would like to continue kind of doing this type of music too, but we're really happy with it. It, it does seem like you have a great feedback because I've listened, like, there, someone posted the entire album online and there was nothing but good comments on it because I was reading through and seeing what some of the older fans had said when it comes to, because you guys tend to do a thing where you go from CD to CD doing a different thing. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah, every, I mean, this, this album is no different than those other albums for that reason and that it is different from the previous yeah. record. But in terms of what is actually on the record is is interesting because it's not really. As, I mean, it's, the reggae stuff is familiar. We've done we've done the reggae stuff in the past for sure. But uh, but there's there's a lot of stuff there that we just haven't really tapped into in the past. So that's another reason why we really dig this record. I think yeah. people are people are really digging it too. So. Yeah, and it seems that from each album, you just keep gaining different genres of band or genres of fans mm -hmm. and. Everyone seems to stick with it, and it doesn't matter that you change. Right. It, well, yeah, we've always been lucky enough to have fans that are just so open-minded, you know, to whatever style we, we choose. And, you know, I'm sure, you know, when you get down to the nitty-gritty, everybody has their preferences, their favorite songs, and this and that. But, it, 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 you know, when we when we uh, finish a show, and obviously the show incorporates, you know, pretty much everything, you know, style-wise that we've done. Kids just they, they they dig it, you know. They dig yeah. the hip hop stuff. They dig the, the metal stuff. They like the reggae stuff. They like the punk stuff. So it's great. It's great. We're we're really lucky to have fans that are so open minded and, and so accepting yeah. of um, any given genre. We haven't tried to do the country or the classical <laughs> yet, but you know, who knows? Well, well, <laughs> see, they tried it and with oh, really? their country song. Oh, really? Really? Okay. Yeah, they had a country vibe with that. And oh wow! That seemed to work out pretty awesome. well for them. So awesome. why not? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You know, some of those, I mean, the country guitar players, you know, those those guys are no joke, you mm -hmm. know. So, I mean, to throw in a little couple couple riffs and that stuff would be kind of fun, but uh, yeah. who knows? Who knows? I don't want to get maybe, ahead of myself. Maybe, like, <laughs> do a bit of a solo during a show and yeah, see how the, band, you know? how the fans go Yeah, kind of like a bluegrass, kind of like really quick bluegrass kind of thing, you know. Yeah. It's like, I don't know. It'd be like, it's just a joke if they don't like it. Yeah, and just if kidding. they like it, it's like... Yeah. We're going for it. I meant to do that. Just kidding. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. It was a joke. Didn't, yeah. you, didn't you get it? Yeah. You guys Shit. didn't get it? Wow. You suck. What's wrong with you? <laughs> okay. So you joined the band in 94, right? I actually joined in uh, 04. Oh, four. And, uh, oh. Yeah, so I've been in the band for. That's what I meant. Oh, it okay. started in 94. There was a four in there somewhere. Yep. Yeah. But, Dyslexia. Uh, uh, 
<laughs> yeah, just just over ten years I've been with the group. Yeah. yeah. Was yeah. was it a hard thing to go with that you had to change from each album, or was it just an easy transition? It was pretty easy. I mean, I jumped in as kind of a it was really just kind of be like a like like a live guy or whatever, you know. But I was into writing music and stuff, and I wanted to I wanted to show them that I could do it. Mm -hmm. Whether they thought it was any good, this is a separate <laughs> issue, but I wanted to show them that I was interested in trying and stuff. And so, when it comes to writing and stuff, I've, I've kind of I've been a pretty I've been a pretty uh, good part of that, just music-wise. Uh, but but in terms of writing from album to album, I don't know. It just it just it all seems it all just feels natural. You know? yeah. It all just it happens pretty organically in terms of writing. And um, this one was a little bit different because we did kind of discuss you know different styles and where yeah. we could go with it, but. It was a style we, you know, that we're into and that I'm into, and and, uh, and it was something I was interested in trying. So when it came time to actually writing, it felt right. It felt, it felt yeah. fine. You know, it felt totally fine. What what kind of writing process do you use? You know, it, the the songs really they come from uh, they they tend to come from demos. Yeah. <laughs> Interview. <laughs> That's gonna be the interview. Too. I'm not cutting that. All oh, right, right, I gotta leave that. Of course. No, uh, they 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 come from uh, they come from demos, and uh, they usually you know the songs will be written out in an instrumental form, and they'll they'll be arranged first chorus, yeah. whatever bridge, and uh, we'll go from there. And you know whatever songs I write, I submit to Jared and the rest of the guys, and Jared will go through different songs that he likes, instrumentals that he likes, and and the ones that he wants to work with, will work with, and uh, some of the stuff might get rearrange like a verse might turn into a chorus or a bridge might change or other parts make make it cut out here and there because it all depends on what he wants to do vocally mm -hmm. what he's hearing in his head you know uh musically so uh stuff will, will will change often and so we just go from there and then when it, go, when it comes time to record all of us really just kind of base whatever parts we need to play on that demo and we yeah. kind of just go from there and so that's really how it's done but uh, yeah, so it's it, you know it, it it's an interesting way of doing it. I know some bands do it, some bands don't do it that way. Some bands go into the studio and they just jam and they they yeah. come up with ideas on the spot. We're certainly open to doing that for sure. I think we just kind of embrace this way of doing it a lot more because we are kind of far apart. You know, we have yeah. one guy in Idaho, we have one guy in Oregon, a guy in Ohio, and I'm in Michigan. So it's mm -hmm. it's rare that we get together in between tours. But that's not to say we couldn't we could yeah. incorporate that way of writing in the future. Yeah. So. You couldn't. You could always just Skype and be like, listen to this thing yeah. I just thought of. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> and you know, we, we do jam a lot at Soundcheck when we get them. And this run's a little bit different because the schedule's different. Yeah. And, you know, it's not our, it's, it's, it's not really our, it's not, you know, we're not headlining. So it's, um, yeah. so we usually just don't really do a, ch a sound check on these types of tours. But uh, when we do get the chance, you know, ideas do come about, you know, so we may, yeah. So in the future we may, we may go to a different uh, style of writing or whatever, but uh, that's primarily the way we do it for the past few years. Has it always been that way? I know you guys have gone through like a lot of band member changes and you've mm -hmm. had people and you've lost people. Like this is your first raw album, so you're not having like a DJ putting in DJ. Oh, right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it's, um, it's a big deal for sure, you know, like... Uh, we, we love DJ product for sure and mm -hmm. uh, it's a, you know it, it's a bummer not having them on stage but at the same time like we're we're on I know we're on a really cool level right now and you know there's nothing personal or anything mm -hmm. like that there's no bad blood or anything it may, yeah. it may you know he may come back in the future I, I don't know I just know he's doing his own thing right now but yeah have go, going to the four piece is definitely a really big uh, step for sure mm -hmm. And it is a lot different because he was on my side of the stage too. Yeah, so, so now your side's kind of empty. Yeah, and it's just, <laughs> it's it, it is strange. It is very strange playing without him up there. He's been up there for so long, you know. He was in the band, you know. Obviously, when I first when I first joined him, he, he was there, you know. And uh, so, but um, but yeah, it, it's it's a lot different for sure, and it's it's a lot more of that. I don't know. It's a lot more of that classic sort of mm. four piece, I guess kind of kind of set up I guess you could say and I don't know coincidentally those are kind of the, the bands that, that we were trying to you know try to emulate those sounds of you know we were really influenced mm -hmm. by those types of bands those four pieces so um, you know kind of, that kind of fits together with that, with that respect so yeah so is like your sound designer who's doing who's adding the beats on the songs that he was 
on that you're playing. Right. Well, you know, um, I, I know a lot of that stuff happens after after my session, after my uh, after my work. I think uh, <laughs> I think uh, uh, Jared may <laughs> handle a lot of that stuff. He may have other people adding that stuff live. We we're just you know we're it's bare bones live. It's yeah. just us, you know. But a lot of the music that we're doing on this record is is pretty stripped down anyway. So there's a lot of that stuff that doesn't won't really you know, won't really have to count on it being there live, you know. Yeah. Just the instruments basically. Just the just I mean when I say instruments, I mean just the the, the basics, you know, the drums, the yeah. uh, the uh, the bass and the guitar. And obviously we got congas and, and uh, melodica as well, which yeah. Jared plays. Although he may not be playing them on this tour, it just again depends on sound check yeah. whether we can make it work. Because congas are such such a nightmare to, <laughs> to check; they take forever. And if you don't, if you just go up there without a check, those things can really just start causing just, lots of problems. <laughs> and then everyone's like, they sounded like shit. Yeah. So we it was one of those things where it was like, it was worth it for us to make the decision whether or not to, to put them yeah. in the set based on whether or not we got the sound check. So that, that's a good thing because so. I know there's a lot of people that even if there's like the entire set will be good but on one song the mic's off right and they're just like the set was shit yeah, yeah. And you're like no no right. Right. no right blame the sound designer right not the band right exactly exactly yeah that <laughs> and and we we go from show to show and we'll you know we have the, sta the same stage manager and we have um we have a couple guys helping us out that travel with us and they do so much work and they can only do so much, but when it comes to front of house sound, like what the mm -hmm. audience actually hears, we rely on house guys or, or you know, whoever we're on tour with, you know, so you, you're not really, you're not going to get the same thing every night. Because you also have different equipment too, so there's every chance in the world for stuff to happen. We'll do a sound check and, you know, during the day and sound great, get up on stage, come showtime, and it's like... Despite the fact that they tell us they haven't touched anything, it's like completely different. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm a, I'm a theater sound designer, so yeah. I know it's like, blame us. If they sound like shit, blame us. <laughs> well, what's, uh, <laughs> what's, the, what's the famous uh, phrase? If, if, it, uh, if it sounds good, the band gets the credit. If, if it, it sounds, sounds bad, like then the, then, the, the, then the sound designers get stuff thrown yeah, at them. Yeah, yeah. My yeah. teacher was actually explaining something to us where he actually got a shoe thrown at him. Ugh. And it's like, it wasn't him. He's like, it's not me. It's the front of the house person. It's not me. Right, right, right. Your mics sound great. Yeah. It's not me. Well, I know oftentimes I'll get, I'll, I'll butt heads with, uh, not real, well, not really butt heads, but I don't know what to do. I just kind of disagree. Don't see eye to eye with certain uh, front of house people yeah. where I'll be, I'll turn my, I, I turn up. Because I don't have yeah. a monitor. All I have is my cab. I gotta compete with these loud ass drums. Cause yeah. Trauma beats the crap out of those drums. Yeah. I got Mark over there who's just low B thunder, just crazy <laughs> crushing bass. So I gotta turn it up, man. And so a lot of times, you know, a lot of times front of house guys are like, hey, can you do me a favor and turn down? And I said, I probably could. I'm not no. going to. I'm not going to. Because I can't hear it. And here's what happens. Because at sound check, there's like nobody in the in the place, so your your guitar is just yeah. bouncing around like crazy. So it sounds a lot louder. You're hearing a lot from out there. Once yeah. once the kids show up, it gets soaked up. So all of a sudden, it sounds like your guitar is like nowhere. It's like, Get like, where did it like, go? What happened? Where what happened? Go? I listened to the sound guy. The sound guy told me to turn down, and now I can't hear myself. Sorry, I have to make yeah. the call. Executive decision. <laughs> so I've it, had to do that yeah. a couple times, you know, on a few occasions. But for the most part, sound guys. I've, I've run into too many sound guys who're like, no, turn it up, turn it up. So. I know it's a preference thing, and it's not. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's you know it's not a hard fast rule. We we are actually trained in my class that if you're working with a band, you go with what the band wants. Right, right. right. And then if it start if they start to yell at you during a show, just fix it. You got to just work with it. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, there's no there's not much time really for ego. You just gotta mm -hmm. do what you gotta do what you gotta do. And yep. uh, you know if I had a if I had a better situation like maybe in ears or if there was a different setup like a monitor or something yeah. like that, for sure I'd be able to accommodate sound guy. But it's so punk rock. <laughs> I just got my amp and my guitar and just play. You know that's all that you know. That's all. There's a like bass player over there on his bike. He's got his GoPro sitting up on top of his helmet. That's awesome. I want a GoPro so bad. <laughs> yeah, he just I'm got one recently. I want one so bad. Yeah, you see, he takes some great 
get footage with that yeah. thing. It's probably got some good stuff today, yeah. I imagine. Well, there's, I love it when the bands put it on the end of their guitars or oh, yeah. on their drums, because then you can really see what they're doing from their angle, and I yeah. love it. And they have such clear picture. Right. And it's only like 200 bucks right. or something like this with that. It's amazing. The case is more expensive, the waterproof case. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah, it's like, the one I was looking at was 500 and I was like, oh, wow. never mind. Yeah. <laughs> you cost more than the... Yeah. I tell you though, those things are pretty amazing though. Oh my god, they're, they're, uh, they're, I mean, some of the footage I've seen is just absolutely amazing. Oh yeah, I would love to do that, like, during this interview at the end, be like, okay, now put this at the end of your guitar, yeah. and we're gonna throw in bits and pieces yeah. from the show into That'd the interview. Fun. That would be So fun. if it gets boring, it's just like, cut it in! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that would be awesome. That would be great. <laughs> Definitely do that. Okay, so now we're gonna do the fun lightning round. Yes. Which is, okay, so my random questions go, first song you ever learned to play? Mm, Come As You Are, Nirvana. Nice, I like it. <laughs> That's a, well, that was a pretty standard one though. As a kid, it was like, that was like, if you play it, if, if somebody picked up a guitar and started playing Come As You Are, I'd be like, yeah, yeah, I get it. Like, yeah, yes, yes, you're supposed to learn that. Like, that was the given. <laughs> Like that didn't like if was, you were able to play that song, that didn't necessarily mean you were a guitar player. <laughs> I thought it was "Smoke on the Water" was like the go-to yeah, one because yeah, there's yeah, so many people. It's yeah. like, look, I can play guitar. Yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah. no, you can't. Yeah, yeah. It's like like uh, also like uh, there was that riff, and then there was like uh, you had the uh, what "Stairway to Heaven" was another yeah. one that was like was in the Wayne's World movie. It was like he starts playing it, and he's like, the guy he tells him, "No, stop playing." He points to the sign that says, "No Stairway to Heaven." <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. It's one of those. All right. Cool. I love it. I love yeah. It. Okay. So, weirdest rumor you've ever heard about yourself? Weirdest rumor? Oh my God. I don't even know if I've ever heard any rumors about. I don't even think I'm at that level where rumors would actually go around yeah. about me. You'd be surprised. Maybe we really? should start one. Do you want us to start one? <laughs> what do you want us to be? We'll I don't start know. it here. I mean, there could be some going around right now that I'm not even. I don't know. I mean, maybe that I'm a Satanist. I don't know. Maybe that I. Uh, I think that goes with most rock people. <laughs> I don't know, maybe maybe that I was a homophobe or something? I don't know, I'm not really sure. Uh, the, the last one I asked him and he's like that I had a big old banana dick and I started laughing and there was a moment of silence. And then he's like, I don't. And I was like, I was gonna, I wanted to ask, but I wasn't gonna do it. I wasn't yeah, gonna do it. You wanted to, but you, but you didn't. I was like, I was trying to be professional. Now I, I don't care. <laughs> it's no. more fun when you're not professional. That's why we're gonna drink afterwards. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> all right, first album you ever bought. First album I ever bought was Stone Temple Pilots Purple, second record. Uh, it was the first, I mean, God, that thing just, it blew me away. And it was crazy because I was with my grandparents who were both, were both passed on but they uh they i was so scared like when i bought it i was with them well they technically bought it but, yeah and we we're riding through oregon we we're going through the countryside and i had the album and to me it was like oh this is a rock album this is crazy and my grandpa was like let's just, just put it in listen i'm like oh no what if he <laughs> says like dirty things and i'm like looking through the lyrics like four songs ahead and i'm reading i'm like oh no Oh no. oh no! What if he says something? You know, like now looking back, it's like when it comes to lyrics, it's like that album isn't is, is pretty tame when it yeah. comes to you know curse words and stuff like that. But at the time, <laughs> I was just like, whoa! He My said grandpa. this word once. That's crazy. But yeah, that was the first record. That that one really just uh, that one just blew me away. But the, there was actually one before that that now I'm, I'm thinking of. Counting Crows, August and Everything After. I was obsessed with that album. I was so obsessed with it. I didn't have a yeah. CD player, so I wanted to listen to it on portable. I had to, I had to like record the CD onto a tape. Yes. Have you, ever, have you heard yes. of those things, cassette tapes? I used to do okay. that. I'm not. Okay. I look 12. Well, I'm I know, not. I'm just saying. I just have to make sure. They had these things called cassettes, and you could record from your CD, and it was awesome. It was the coolest thing ever. And, or from uh, the radio. Oh, or from the radio. I did that too. It was amazing. And uh, yeah, I did then that. Then you're just and hoping that, that it didn't go out. Oh yeah. It's like stay and stay and stay. Damn it. And then a commercial comes in, and just like cuts off the end of it, or it's the DJ. Yeah. Doesn't stop talking. They have to do this thing where they have to keep talking until the lyrics come in it's yeah. like what, is, what about like, the music? stop yeah. stop this is the best riff at the beginning uh, you are a son of and a bitch. they just they keep going all the way and they just want to see how far they can get until that until the singer comes in it's like wow, I was I was once true. at a stoplight and I love I think it was the beginning of Slash's Anastasia mm. and I just stared at my radio and I'm like really oh, God. really stop talking yeah 
and it's always gibberish. And you know, they're, they're just thinking of more things to just fill in the space with. They're not actually saying anything useful. Yeah, I'd get fired so fast because I'd be like, nah, oh song plays now. Why do you guys do that? Why, why just, I'm just going to ask them, why do you do that? Can you not do that anymore, please? Just no. <laughs> Stop it. Well, that I'm here a... to listen to the music, not you talk. I guess it's like with satellite now, you don't really, you don't really have to deal with that too much, though. There's, yeah. there's a lot of alternatives, but. Yeah, she listens to a lot of serious XM. Do they do it there? Um, no, not really. Octane volumes, they're pretty good. Yeah. Every once in a while they do, though. Yeah. <laughs> like, they'll cut, yeah. they'll cut one off and just kind of stop but not nearly as bad as used to be. Bastards. Yeah. Bastards. Okay, yeah, so I guess I kind of like overly answered that last question because I feel like I it's fine. didn't answer we enough can do it. the question before that. So I don't gonna care. For it. We can do whatever. <laughs> it's my show. We'll do what I want. Gotcha. <laughs> what is your one vice? The one thing you have to have. That I have to have? Your bad habit. Oh, I have a bad habit. It's probably wine. I really love wine. It's a, it's a bad habit. But there's some... There's some benefits to it. But they, they say that if you drink a glass of wine a day, it's good for you. But mm -hmm. what kind of wine? And how big is the glass that they're talking about? Bottle. Yeah. Counts. Yeah, I count it as 750 milliliters. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, it's it's just... That's I, at least safer than going 750 milliliters of rum. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Well, you have less of an excuse with that because, I mean, how many scientific studies if they are even scientific, come out saying, Probably oh, not. it's good for your digestion and, uh, you know. It makes it so that you're less likely to become an alcoholic because it'll build you up a tolerance. Yeah. Science. That's true, yeah. There's no way you're going to get drunk because you've already drinking this stuff way too much. That's it. <laughs> your tolerance yeah. is huge. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's probably, that's probably one of the vices, right. I'd say. One song you wish you wrote. Oh, my God. All Along the Watchtower. Yes. Why couldn't that have been me? <laughs> that's such a that's such a shitty question to ask. Why couldn't that have been like? Why of course, not me? of course, it's, it wasn't me. Of course, it wasn't. But, <laughs> oh man, I don't know. To say that that was that was my jam. My God, that would be amazing. And of course, I don't know. I'm I'm talking more specifically about. And this is kind of weird. I'm talking about the Jimi Hendrix version. Yeah. No. I, I, I knew. I think. Uh, yeah, because I know that's one of your. Um, Idols is Jimi Hendrix. Oh yeah, he's one yeah. of them, definitely. definitely. Yeah, your influences, because I was reading through your stuff, I'm like, what questions can I ask that he hasn't been asked 800 times? Oh, right, right, right. It's difficult. That's why I have this. Not everyone's asked these random ass questions. <laughs> right, 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 I love it, I love it. <laughs> Next time we're just gonna be like, what's your favorite drink? Yeah, that's, I Outside like of it. wine. I what's like your favorite it. Drink? <laughs> we should, should we just Should we just make that the question now? Yes, it's the next question. What's your favorite drink? Oh man, that's such a good question. Okay, so it would be Pepsi, uh, the Mexican version with the real sugar. Oh, Out yeah. of the bottle. Yeah, long skinny. I've had that. The, the, that's the best drink ever. The best drink. And, and better than water. <laughs> and you need water to survive. But that's, that's how delicious. much I like that. That's how much, <laughs> that much I love that. Hold on, she looks confused. Did you break the camera? No, it's hit the 20 minute mark and stopped. So then I started again and then it stopped. Uh oh. So I start again. So it's going to be a little PC. Okay, whatevs. Choppies. It's whatever. It's not like I'm talking gibberish every once in a while. Like, no, I'm talking It's like the radio people. I talk gibberish. It's fine. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. Strangest thing you've ever been asked to sign. Oh, man, that's, that's a good one. I'm pretty sure there was a prosthetic limb at some point. That's fantastic. It's pretty, you know, my, my memory is pretty bad, but... I can recall. I think there was a prosthetic somewhere in there. If you were the person, let me know. I want to see a picture. <laughs> prosthetic limb that's there signed. Was. <laughs> I think there was. Oh my gosh. But the one thing I get a lot is is people want they want you to sign their skin and they'll tell you beforehand that they are going to tattoo that mm -hmm. signature. Something about that just uh, that makes it just freaks me out a little bit, you know. <laughs> well, do you have any tattoos? I have zero. Well, we don't either. I'm commitment phobic in that way, so yeah, that kind of freaks me out too. Well, see, I, I would have to draw the tattoo myself, mm -hmm. but I don't like my artwork, so yeah. it's like this kind of catch twenty two. Like if I if I drew it and gave it to somebody yeah. to do it, like if I got it done on Tuesday and Thursday, I'd hate it. 
so it's, no, yep. Yep. it's not gonna happen. <laughs> well, nor I had one band that they, that I met, and they told me they wouldn't sign my shirt because I got to the point where I just wear tank tops now, and it's like, just sign the shirt. I got nothing else for you to sign, just sign the shirt. Yeah. And they said they, were, they wouldn't sign the shirt unless they signed my boobs. Oh. And I was like, seriously? And then they got permanent marker on one of my favorite bras, and I'm like, sure. Seriously? <laughs> but I was like, whatever. It's, it's it, came, tough. It, it came off. It came off. It was fine. It's tough, you know. I'm really glad I don't have boobs yet. <laughs> yet. Just, it would just it would just cause problems. <laughs> yet. Yet. I, I kept, yes. I kept, it's yet, gonna I happen. I kept yet in there. I kept yet it's, in there. It's gonna happen. You know, I mean, what, 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 if I make it to 80 or 90 or something like that, who knows? You never know. I might end up having to wear a bro or a man's ear. I don't know. Who knows? You don't know what the future is gonna hold. You don't. You don't. <laughs> Jesus. I don't know if you guys are Seinfeld fans. That's where that, that was a reference for that. We we met um, Art of Dying and they were they quoted like an entire episode to us. Oh yeah. While my cousin braided their sure. guitarist's hair. Sure, sure. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yep. Sounds about right. Yep. I was like, this is fantastic. Sound like my kind of dudes. Yeah, we we have a uh, yeah we, we there's there's a few of us on the bus that are quite fond of the Seinfeld. We like uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm as well. We love Larry David. His work is great. Just crack up that stuff. Genius. I'm more of a Game of Thrones fan. I don't yeah. know. I have like a Khaleesi necklace, mm -hmm. and I have my friends gave me the Khaleesi eggs, mm -hmm. dragon eggs for Christmas. I'm going as Khaleesi for Halloween. I'm going to buy the wig. It's going to be great. I'm gonna learn the Dovegetti's Unsullied speech. I'm insane, so. Well, you really know this stuff because I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> I know I know of Game of Thrones and that's about it. That's where it stops. One, you watch like the first episode and you're like 10 minutes in, why does everybody love this? And then yeah. all of a sudden you're like, I should just watch another episode just to make yeah, sure. And the next thing you know, you're three like. seasons in and you're yeah. like, what it just happened? Yeah, what happened? What day life? is it? Yeah, yeah, I have a I beard. Did How did it wouldn't happen? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> got a beard. I'm Everybody go grows waxed. a beard when they watch that show. Apparently. They do. Based on what my what I just said. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. One song on your playlist that may shock fans. Oh, that's that's a pretty good one. Uh, probably. Oh, I'm trying to think here. On my playlist, what do I have? I have so much crap on there. <laughs> The most random one you have on there. I have, um, I have Funeral for a Friend by uh, Elton John on there. Nice. I don't know if that's if that's random. It doesn't seem random to me, but it might it, seem it random. It may shock else. people. It uh, may shock people. Um, it might not. I mean, it might be weird for somebody to think immediately. Yeah. The guitar player for Head PE. Listen to, to Elton, Elton John. John. Yeah. It might seem strange to people. Yeah. We had a five-minute conversation in my last interview about Miley Cyrus because that was oh. that was on, what they had on it. Oh yeah, yeah. So we had like a five-minute conversation. It was interesting. <laughs> Good stuff. Though. Very interesting. Ellen John, man, that guy's—he's a master. That guy is—he's got some great work, man. Great, I don't, you know, just amazing stuff. Amazing stuff. All right, what is your pre-show ritual besides talking to me for 30 minutes? Well, you know, I like to, I have to warm up. And it's, it's as much of a mental thing as it is physical. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I gotta make sure my strings are stretched out. I gotta make sure I, I got everything with me in my picks. And I gotta check my pockets 57 times, you know. It's all OCD, you know, yeah. it's all OCD. It's all that, well, maybe not totally OCD. You gotta call it OCD, but yeah, there's a little bit of a neurosis there, you know. Where you have to check 80 times? Oh, all the time, it's horrible. It's like, that was there, but did, am I sure that wasn't yesterday when I checked? Well, it's like, you know, I mean, you think <laughs> of like the musicians like Keith Richards and stuff, these guys are just getting wasted and just going up on stage and you kind of picture that they're just kind of carefree and do whatever and it's like, I'm so not that. I'm just like, okay. <laughs> What am I wearing the right shoes? What's going on? Oh, okay, what's in the number? <laughs> so yeah, I, I have a whole ritual there, you know. You gotta make sure the nose hairs aren't too long, you know. You gotta make sure that uh, yeah, everything's everything's tip top, you know. <laughs> uh, of course, I gotta pour myself a little bit of a, of a cocktail, get myself a little bit of red wine, get loosened up. Or not, you know, sometimes I don't. You know, it depends on the tour. Sometimes okay. I just don't drink. It's because I'm just not gonna do it this tour, but this tour, yeah, I'm just gonna a couple cocktails. See, that's pretty much the ritual. Boring, yeah. but it's boring, but it's a part of my life. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty okay. Much it. So these are the last two questions. So right near the end of the interview. So the people that are just like, oh my God, finish. <laughs> We're almost done. Calm down. 
Um, what is one thing you would change about the industry? I would change. Wow. Well, you know, it would it would be nice to see. It would it would be nice to see more uh, more organizations that actually help musicians. And that sounds like it sounds like kind of a negative thing, but the truth is there are many. And uh, you know, like what you guys are doing right here, just helping mm -hmm. spread the word. I mean, we need more of that more than ever, you know, because so yeah. many bands are just really struggling right now. Who weren't? Who wouldn't have necessarily been struggling as much as, yeah. as they were in, in the past, you know? So, um, you know, we really just need more people to come and come and help bands and come out and support bands because uh, you know there's just not as much money going around for for a lot of these bands. As yeah. Maybe. And where there is money, it's going to the people who kind of already have it anyway. Like the you know? labels? Yeah. It's really just kind of, you know, it's it's really just a reflection on kind of the economy in general, you know. Uh, but the, but the, the music industry is kind of a reflection on that, you know. What would have been like the middle class, the equivalent of the middle class, uh, like in terms of a band, they have less. A lot of them can't afford to tour like they used to. Yeah. Know? And... Um, and some of it is, you know, some of it is the glamour stuff just needs to get cut out. You know, a lot of them may have had buses before and now they're in vans, you know. They really got to get smart with their money and they really have to because there's not much mm -hmm. there. But everybody's kind of trying to hold on to what they have, you know. And it happens from both both ends, you know, from, from promoters to agents to everybody. Yeah. Everybody's just trying to pinch pennies the best they can. So, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, organizations to help, like in terms of just like, uh, you know, like a, like companies that make gear, you know, throw out a couple guitars here and there, help yeah. us out. You know what I mean? Because it, it it sucks that a lot of companies now who used to be able to kind of just say, hey, use my guitar, use my product, whatever it is, give it to you, it, just use it, and you know, you're you're, uh, you're you're showing our name. You know, that's great. A lot of those companies aren't doing that anymore, but it sucks because musicians need that more now yeah. than ever you know yeah. and so it would be nice to see a lot more of that uh, of that help out yeah. there for sure and it is out there it's just it's difficult for everybody so yeah. i think eventually the, it, it may come around in the future once people kind of start figuring out how to make this whole thing work but yeah it would be it would be nice to see a lot more of that for sure yeah. okay so the final question what kind of what would you say to bands that were trying to get make it what would you, what kind of what would you tell them I would when just say into the industry? I would say be persistent believe in yourself obviously um, don't you know don't sell yourself short by by letting anybody tell you that what you're doing is wrong you know I mean some of the greatest artists have defied convention and have as a result created a new convention and uh, I think uh, I think it's important to be wise. There's a lot of uh, there's, there's there's a lot of um, knowledge out there in terms of how to how to make smart, uh, smart choices in, in the industry. You know, um, and it is different than it used to be, but a lot of the a lot of the rules still kind of hold true. So definitely uh, arm yourself with as much knowledge as you can, so that you're not uh, you, know, you don't get taken advantage of. Right. There's, there's a lot of opportunity for that to happen. Um, so yeah, I would definitely say that for sure. Just believe in yourself. Believe in yourself and be smart. Be smart with your money. That's great advice. Yeah. So we're gonna end on that. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> okay, so that's it for a shot of rock. Thanks for watching this. If anybody watches this, thank you very much. So thank you for joining me. Thank you. Appreciate so it. So from Alex and Jackson of Head PE and my lovely camera person Megan who just pushes a button. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Good for something. That's Politics. it for a shot of rock. Thanks for joining us and here seeing you at the rock show.